The Zephyr Prime patch brought us two weapons, a very pretty Cronen Prime and an absolute monster of an assault rifle in the form of the T-Baron Prime. Hey guys, hello and welcome back, as always my name is Lazar and today we're gonna be diving deeper into this absolute powerhouse of a weapon. Considering the high mastery lockout on the T-Baron Prime, I'm gonna be assuming you already know the basics. We're gonna be covering something cheap, something affordable that anybody can get into, but we also have an end game set up with a Riven. There's a lot of ground to cover, so let's jump right into the T-Baron Prime. By default, the weapon comes equipped with three firing modes that you can switch using your alt fire, that's your middle mouse button. First off, you got burst. In burst mode, the T-Baron Prime will fire in quick succession three bullets. In semi mode, it's shot by shot action. And in auto mode, well, it's auto mode, with a very small recoil, and as you can see, you can pretty much keep it on the target without having to fight your mouse. That being said, let's jump into the stats and check out how exactly do those fire modes affect the status chance and the crit chance. Accuracy you will see is 33.3 across the board, so the accuracy will not change. This is a very good accuracy for an assault rifle, which makes it semi-viable for heavy caliber, but we're gonna talk about that just a little bit later. In burst mode, your critical chance is 28%, in semi mode it's 30%, and in auto mode it's sadly only 16%. Moving on to the critical multiplier, you got 3.0 in burst, 3.4 in semi, and 2.8 in auto. Fire rate will be 7.38 in burst, and of course in uh, semi mode it's gonna be one by one, but the default fire rate is 6.0, so it's gonna really depend on how fast you can mash your button, or if you wanna use some sort of a macro, and in auto mode it's gonna be 8.33. These are good across the board, again, it fits the type of weapon it is. Honestly, it's three weapons combined into one. Magazine clip is gonna be constant across all fire modes, it's gonna be 42, noise alarming, reload 2.0 seconds, which is actually pretty good, and if I am to be super critical and switch my back for complaints then the only semi weak point of this weapon is gonna be that 42 magazine clip but we're gonna talk more about that just a tad later status chance in burst mode you got 20% 18% in semi and in auto mode you got a whopping 32% and you can already see that the T-Baron is made to be built depending on what kind of fire mode you're gonna be using ideally again the damage is impact slash and uh, puncture and it will be constant across all fire modes. 13.8 is the value of the slash and the impact and 18.4 is the value of the puncture. And again, it remains constant across all fire modes. My weapon has been format 5 times, but for the build I'm recommending you guys, or for the builds I'm gonna be recommending, 4 format should already be enough. And in case you didn't know, the mod capacity of 60 and you have the t on Prime, for some reason you need to upgrade with an Orokin Catalyst. Sorry had to do that. Now let's slap on some mods. First we're gonna cover the mandatory mods for mostly any assault rifle. First off, the first thing you want to do is slap on some flat damage. When it comes to damage we have two options. Serration which has 165% extra damage and heavy caliber. Heavy caliber will also add 165% damage, however you're gonna be taking an accuracy loss, minus 55%, which is quite the wall up, at least maxed out. Now, taking that uh, accuracy loss into account, your accuracy be becomes 16.8 across the board. It becomes manageable. It's okay at medium and short ranges, and at long ranges, the accuracy loss will hurt your damage. For now, we're gonna stay away from it, but I do believe it is worth using heavy caliber on the T-Baron Prime, especially for certain situations. Next off, we're gonna amplify our crit chance with point strike and if you guys got prime versions of any of the mods that I recommend then by all means jump right in and use your prime versions. With a high critical chance now we're gonna get some critical damage. Pointless to have a high crit chance if you don't have any crit damage and it's gonna be vital sense with plus 120% critical damage. Next is the final mandatory mod for the T-Baron Prime and of course it's gonna be multi-shot with split chamber. Now split chamber will add 90% multi-shot. And these four mods is what I like to call mandatory mods. Across all builds, these four mods will be present and you should always have them equipped on your T-Baron. 
What do we equip next? It really depends on what kind of build you're going after because the weapon, as I said, can be built in a number of different ways. Do you want to build status? Do you want to build crit with bleed, with hunter munitions? Or do you want to just build a flat out damage with corrosive? It really depends. And we're going to be covering a couple of the most effective builds now. First off, let's go for something standard. And as per the usual, we're going to be taking the uh, example of the Grenier. These being the toughest targets in Warframe. So we want to build corrosive. When adding elemental damage to a weapon, you have two options. You can either go for the 90 mods or for the 60-60 mods, which will add 60% of an element and 60% status chance. Now, the general rule of thumb here is that the 60-60 mods are a bit more effective when you're getting higher in level. 100 plus enemies, go for 60-60 mods. Under 100 plus enemies, then the damage, the impact damage becomes greater and you can use the 90 mods. For this example, we're going to be going for the 60-60 mods as we're going to be fighting level 100 plus enemies. And by fighting, I mean, of course, shooting. We're gonna need toxin and electricity. Now, I don't really like to recommend expensive mods for my builds. High voltage is probably one of the more expensive mods on the build, and this one costs about 40, 50 plat off the trade chat. If not, you can farm it from the mission Nialgar on the planet Eris. It has a pretty low drop chance after you find all the secret caches. And we're gonna be adding, like I said, malignant force with high voltage. Let's check out what happens to our stats after all these mods. In burst mode, we got a status chance of 66% and we made 275 corrosive, which will be a constant across all fire modes. In semi mode, we got a lower chance of 61.6% and in auto, we're gonna have the highest status chance of 90%. Now keep in mind that this is an assault rifle, you're going to be firing a lot of bullets, so you don't need to overdo it with the status chance, not at all. This is not an armor stripper like the Boar Prime would be, or the Stern Ray, or something like that. This is still an assault rifle. For the final two mods, what we're going to be slapping is what I mentioned a little bit earlier. Heavy Caliber adds a whole lot of damage, another serration basically, but it comes at that accuracy loss. As for our final mod slot, we're going to be equipping a bit more multi-shot with Vigilante Armaments. Now, Vigilante Armaments doesn't really add a whole lot of multi-shot, only 60%, but considering the standard version of uh, Split Chamber only adds 90% multi-shot, Vigilante Armaments becomes all the more potent. Also, we do fire a lot of bullets, and in Burst and Semi, we got a pretty high critical chance of 70 and 75%, so Vigilante Armament becomes all the more potent because of the set bonus. Now, don't misunderstand, the set bonus is nice to have, but it's not groundbreaking. You shouldn't base your decision on the set bonus alone. And this is gonna be our first build. This is a standard corrosive build for flat out damage. And this is what I recommend for somebody starting out with a weapon wanting to try something solid. And again, your elemental mods, uh, malignant force and high voltage are supposed to be swapped in and out depending on where you're going and who you're fighting. Now, since we got our first build, why don't we test it out against some enemies? We're gonna be spawning in level 115 corrupted heavy gunners. No buffs, no arcanes, no anything like that, at least for now, we're just gonna go to town on these guys. Now what I'm gonna do is go on the right column, burst, on the left column, semi, and then we're gonna do a bit of auto as well. The burst fire mode is what I like to call a bit of a middle ground for the T-Baron Prime. You got good critical chance, good critical multiplier, and a healthy base status chance as well. As you can see, the targets get all sorts of status effects applied to them. You got slash, corrosive, impact, the only one you don't have is puncture. No, there's the impact and the puncture as well. Now let's switch up to semi. This is a bit more efficient in terms of ammo management if you guys care for such things. For example, if I'm staying in Kuva for the first 30 minutes or so, I'm gonna simply keep it on semi because it's a whole lot more efficient on the ammo and I have to reload less. 30 minutes plus, then I'm switching to burst fire mode. Which is gonna be your favorite is entirely subjective. I switch a lot between semi and burst and I don't really use a lot of auto. Now auto has a higher status chance, yes? So therefore we're gonna be applying a whole lot more status to the targets, which means in this case in particular that we're gonna be stripping away that armor a whole lot more efficiently. However, that semi weak point we talked about a little bit earlier, the uh, clip size of 42 kind of comes into play. I wouldn't necessarily play this weapon as an armor stripper like the Boar Prime or the Stern Wraith or something like that. I would keep it to burst and semi, but again, it is entirely up to you. 
Now this is gonna be our base build, this is a standard build, nothing fancy and again you can swap in the 90 mods instead of the 60-60 mods if you're doing lower level content. And of course the elemental damage should be applied depending on where you're going and who you're fighting. Now we're gonna be talking about a crit build through hunter munitions, of course you saw this one coming. We're gonna keep the four mandatory mods we talked about earlier and we're gonna be equipping hunter munitions plus 30% chance to apply slash status on an enemy on critical hit. So in order for us to apply more slash statuses to a target we're gonna need a higher crit chance and some more multi shot will be better as well. More hits on the targets means more uh, slash. Now the final three mods we're gonna be using is a bit of an option and it's gonna come down a lot to you guys. First of all, a smart idea would be good to build viral, correct? So why don't we build viral? And again, the same rule applies to the 90 and 60, 60 mods. Think about the content you're gonna be doing and apply accordingly. But first, let's add some cold. With rhyme rounds or cryo rounds, we're gonna be slapping on rhyme round, 60% cold and 60% status chance. Now, the thing is, and I know you're, what you're thinking, we don't need a whole lot of statuses applied on the target. However, considering that the best application for hunter munitions will be through burst and or semi, ideally for burst because of the higher critical chance, it is important to get consistent viral procs on the target, which is why the 6060 mods will offer slightly better results than the 90 mods. We got our cold, so let's slap on some toxin as well with malignant force. And if you guys want to go for a combo or 90 and 60-60, you can do that as well. The results were, to be honest, very, very similar. And the final mod, well, like I said before, we can go for a bit of extra multi-shot. We have a few options here. Fang Fusillade is another great mod for this build. Now, if I equip Fang Fusillade, which will increase my slash by 120%, you will see that my slash now is the highest value on the weapon outside of Viral. Again, so you can get rid of Viral completely and then your slash will be tops. That means more and bigger slashes apply to the target. Again, with Fang Fusillade. However, in testing, this did not prove the most efficient for a standard, again, Viral build. What you want to go for is a bit more multi-shot, but you do have a couple of additional options. Argon Scope. Now if I equip Argon Scope in a burst and semi mode, I'm going to be having plus 100% crit chance. That means that with every shot on the target, with every bullet that lands, I'm going to have a chance to apply the slash status from Hunter Munitions. I don't really like to recommend expensive mods for my build. This one off the trade chat right now you can get it for at the very minimum 200 plat if not more. It does prove just a little bit more efficient but not by a huge margin. So if you don't have it, don't, you don't need to go out of your way to get it. For now, we're going to be testing the build like that. And we're going to be changing our testing procedure just a bit so you can compare uh, potency of slash builds. First on the right, semi on the left and no auto this time simply because of how hunter munitions works. Auto mode would be the less efficient version, uh, at least for a hunter munitions build that is. And as you can see these guys are dying without any sorts of issue. We get consistent viral procs on the target and the slashes are absolutely melting them. You can burst them free four times if you want to make sure they're gonna die and that is gonna be it for the corrupted heavy gunners. Now if we switch to semi we have a higher critical chance so that means more applications of the hunter munition slash however we have a lower status chance so maybe uh, our viral procs are not gonna be as constant but as you can see it's really no issue at all. We get constant viral procs even in semi and the slashes are a bit more often absolutely melting the target no problem at all this would be the fire mode that would be most efficient with such a build again if you love hunter munitions because it is op and i know then definitely try to use semi against your targets it is the most efficient way now for these guys what we're going to be doing is a 10 shot test on the first free grenier simply so you can compare the results of the slash build six seven 8, 9, 10. I know this is a bit of a hassle, but it is worth doing. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There we go. So what do we got? We got a guy on 50%, we got another guy on roughly 60%, and the third guy we got it on 70%. I was unlucky with this one. 
It is possible from 10 shots for these guys to die, but not really all that often. Now we're gonna be changing up our slash build. Of course, in day-to-day -day scenarios, they're not exactly gonna be stopping and leaving them alone all that often, are you? You're gonna probably shoot till they die. On that note, we're gonna drop Rhyme Rounds and Malignant Force. We're gonna be keeping Vigilante Armaments. We're gonna go for a slash build that focuses more on higher slashes and more slashes. It's gonna be the most effective slash build you can build. And before you throw rotten tomatoes at me, yes, it is without viral. We're gonna be going for heavy caliber. Heavy caliber, like I said before, adds a lot of damage, but it, it does come at a uh, accuracy loss. As for our final mod, you have two options. Once again, Fanged Fusillade, and the last one will be Argon Scope. And this is when we get to a bit of expensive territory, but again, I think it's worth seeing in action. So with Argon Scope, we're gonna get more slashes. With this one, is more damage and multi-shot. Basically, this is the trio, the ideal trio when it comes to a Hunter Munitions build. Now, if you guys cannot stomach the accuracy loss of Heavy Caliber, go for Fang Fusillade. If you don't have the money or don't want to use Argon Scope for some reason, then again, Fang Fusillade. You can swap any of these out for Fang Fusillade. It's not gonna be as efficient, but it's still gonna be kick-ass, guaranteed. And I'm gonna show you exactly in practice how this one works out. Kill the remnants, re-simulate, and once again we're gonna be doing burst on the right column, semi on the left column. There is no more viral, but the amount of slashes is greater, also the value of the slashes is greater as well. Look at that. Absolutely wrecking through a target without a viral proc which reduces their health by 50%. Now we're gonna switch it up to semi. I think you get the general idea. It's gonna come down to you. If you wanna build this weapon for hunter munitions, I thought it was important for you to know that going for viral isn't necessarily always the best case scenario and a build like this just deals flat out more damage and it doesn't need the viral proc. I would love to have viral on it, but there's simply not enough room. And once again, the 10 shot test. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Don't even need to hit that one ten times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No, you don't need more than eight. As you can see, it just simply deals a whole lot more damage, and you don't have to rely on viral procs. Maybe you can't hit the target enough times before it dies. I just prefer to deal a whole lot more damage and stop worrying about viral and slashes killing it before the viral goes up. But again, it's up to you. Both of these builds are effective. In testing, this is the one that proves more damage. If you're just interested which is the one that gives more damage, this is the one. It is. It does work better without viral. So there you go. You have an option. It's all up to you. And with that out of the way, let's switch to a Riven build. But before we do that, I'm gonna be mentioning that there is a status build for this weapon. You can pour color status and make it into an armor melter. However, in testing, it simply falls flat uh, in terms of damage of the standard build and crit blade. Not only damage, but also kill time as well. Now, for our Riven setup, we are running a Tiberon Act. Can. In any case, this is the best one I got. A friend hooked me up with a cheap ribbon for the T-Baron and after 23 rolls, this one it was the best I could get. It has multi-shot and critical damage. And a ribbon such as this one will work well both for a standard uh, corrosive build, an elemental build if you want to call it like that, or a bleed damage build. I'm not a fan of hunter munitions builds, so I usually go for corrosive builds. I prefer my targets dead without having to bleed them out. In any case, other than that, we got infected clip and high voltage. Of course, this is uh, basically the combination of corrosive. I kept 160-60 mod for the status chance and then I increased the damage with a 90 mod. But again, these are purely optional depending on where you're going, what you're fighting and so on and so forth. Now, considering the high critical damage, I also swapped in Argon Scope because, well, it would be folly not to make use of that high crit damage. And let's see, what kind of a difference does this Riven make? The Riven disposition for the T-Baron Prime, as you saw there, is 5 out of 5, and to be honest, that kind of baffles me. This is one strong weapon. I was expecting the Riven disposition to go down, but so far, it hasn't. First, burst mode. 
and as you can see it is a whole lot more effective than before. Rivens do make quite a difference, especially this position 5 Rivens. Now do you need a Riven for the Tiberon to be effective? I think that's clearly not the case. And right now Tiberon Rivens are extremely expensive, I mean an unrolled Tiberon Riven goes for at the very minimum 500 plat if not more, so they are very expensive and in all honesty you simply do not need them. Now just for kicks let's go for auto. Again, this is my least favorite fire mode for the Tiberon. I simply believe that this is not the type of weapon you would like to use on auto. Maybe the Gorgon Ray for the Soma Prime would be would be uh, better candidates for such a fire mode. And that's what a Riven can do. Wow, what a difference. However, maybe you're the kind of person that needs even more power. Maybe you would like to completely annihilate all your targets. And for that, we're going to be changing a couple of things out. Now, this one is just for kicks and fun because I believe we did earn it. So let's slap on an aura. Now, the aura for assault rifles is called, where are you? Rifle amp, and we get 27% extra damage. But arcanes are a whole lot more important. Arcane Rage, now this one on headshot, which we will do plenty of, 10% chance for plus 100 and 20% damage for rifles for 16 seconds. As for our second one, is gonna be Arcane Acceleration. Arcane Acceleration on critical hit, which again we do plenty of, 20% chance for plus 60% fire rate to rifles for 6 seconds. Now, Acceleration drops from the second Eidolon, Rage drops from the third Eidolon, you can farm it down on Cetus or you can pay about 100 plat each for the R freeze if you can't be arsed to farm it. But we're not gonna stop there, we're gonna respawn our targets and we're also gonna be activating Mirage's abilities, her first and third abilities which will pump up our damage even further. Now let's see what kind of difference do we got. Absolute carnage and mayhem. That was burst, let's switch to semi. And these are Corrupted Heavy Gunners, these are no pushovers, and if you wish you can switch it up to level 155, there's not gonna be much of any difference. We are absolutely wrecking through these targets with no issue at all, and to be honest I simply don't know what kind of content in Warframe would require this much firepower, but it's always nice to have. And that's gonna do it for this build guide. Hopefully you got all the info you need to build your T-Baron Prime. You have a couple of options and yes, currently the weapon is quite strong. I'm gonna thank you guys so much for watching. Like, favorite, share and subscribe if you enjoyed the content. If you got any feedback for me or would like to request a specific weapon build, by all means leave it in the comment section down below. I can't promise you that I'll do it like next time, but I will read each and every comment. You can also find me on Twitch, Facebook, Twitter, all the usual places. But until next time guys, why didn't you wave? You ruined my outro. Bye bye.